call from Alex. To accept. Alex. How you doing? You know I'm doing hey, all right, Alex. Alex. So I um got into uh some legal trouble with uh my girlfriend one night and uh it ended up costing me three hundred and seventy five dollars. So I uh, actually went down to a boat launch and it was probably just after dusk and uh, I was sitting down with her, you know, doing what you do. And then suddenly this fog light or spotlight comes on my truck and suddenly someone banging on my window saying, get out, get out. And so I thought it was some like homeless people underneath the bridge. And suddenly he just keeps going. So they, like, all right, get under the blanket in the back and hide. I'll go out and deal with it. Well, I get out and then he's like, turn around. So apparently I still to this day do not know. I think he was a game warden, but I'm really not sure. But um, I basically got a 375 ticket for getting a blow job under a bridge. And I went to contest it in court. And the judge only reduced it by half, even though I had a clean record. And I was very confused. What what state are you in, Alex? Washington. Okay. Well, Alex, first of all, you know, nice. uh, I, I'm not a Washington attorney. This is not legal advice. And your matter is already over, so it shouldn't matter. Um, but a lot of states do have indecent exposure or sex act in public violations such as that. And, you know, it, it's very possible or probable that that ticket the game warden or officer wrote to you is within their... Um, you know, is, is within their boundaries or within their limits, you know, and, and I'm sorry that that happened. And the judge actually is pretty cool cutting the fee in half, I think. So what, so, I mean, you know, what was it? 375 cut, cut by two. So that's, I don't know. I'm pretty bad at math. That's 180 bucks, give or take 187 yeah. bucks. Um, Around there. Yeah. Yeah, I'm well, sorry I mean, that happened, but, but... He didn't see nothing. That's the thing, is, like, he didn't see anything. So it's like, I just got a ticket for, I guess, being down there beyond dusk, but... Still, well, you, you can take, close. you know, you, you could take some circumstantial evidence. You know, I'm sure if you were in a closed car, your windows were all foggy, you guys were probably in the back seat. Um, you know, how long it took for you to get out of the car. Um you know, and to be quite honest, you even admitted that you were getting a blowjob, you know, here. So, you know, he, he might have seen something or, or, you know, heard something that inferred or gave him, you know, enough evidence to, to write you that ticket. And, and it sounds like when you went to court, you, you pled guilty if that's, if your ticket got reduced, so you didn't fight it, which you, you had the right to, but. Oh, I did, um, I did fight it. Oh, you did fight it. So you went to trial. Yeah, yeah I did. I um, I went down there because he wrote me a ticket for like being down there past dusk. And so when you pull into the boat launch and I went back the next day and all the signs are covered completely with sticker bushes. <laughs> so you couldn't see them anyway. So you couldn't read the signs that said you couldn't be there. I mean, I've lived there so long. I know that you can't be there, but still. In the eyes right, of the law, but... technically, you can't see the sign. So I showed the pictures to the judge. She's like, all right, reduced by half. I was like, okay, well, whatever. I have a clean record, but that's fine. So I went back the next day after the trial, and all the sticker bushes were gone. So having a sign is not outcome determinative, right? So, I mean, like... You know, I, I could go out into, you know, I don't know, like just a random street. I could get in my car and go into park in a random street or a random parking lot 
and you know that there's there doesn't need to be a sign that says you know hey by the way no blow jobs in this parking lot past 9 p.m or at all right so so i i would just and i'm just guessing right um the, the sign is not outcome determinative of what was happening. It was more just that what like you for, for all you know, you, you could have been in your own driveway doing that and still gotten that same ticket just because you were in public, in the public view. And there was that, you know, it's just a indecent, indecency argument. I gotcha. So my next question is, what is your, if let's say you get a ticket of any sort, what is the best things to say to the judge when you go to fight it? Well, it, it just depends, right? On how much evidence they have. Let me, let, let's back up a little bit. The best, the best thing you can do is when you are getting a ticket, the, the second that you are getting pulled over for anything, you need to shut the fuck up. It is, that is rule number one. The officer get, comes to your window. They say, pull out your ID. You pull out your ID because you have to identify yourself. Uh, again, I'm a Texas lawyer. I assume that's true for every state. You know, if you don't identify yourself, you're probably gonna get in trouble. I feel safe saying that that's pretty unanimous. Um, then they're gonna ask you a bunch of questions. They're going to try to get under your skin. You're going to say, officer, I'm not talking about my day. Officer, you know, or, or hey, 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 Tom, do you know why I pulled you over? No, officer, I don't know why you pulled me over, nor am I going to guess. I'm not going to give you any evidence. I'm not going to give you anything. I want you to tell me everything. I'm not going to be talking about my day. I'm not going to tell you who I'm with. Respectfully, of course, you don't need to be a dick to them. But, you know, you just say, officer, respectfully, uh, just, t just tell me what you need from me. And if I'm free to go, great. If not, so that, that's how you can set yourself up best. Because a lot of times police officers will pull you over for something very minor and then end up walking away with something much worse because you just were running your damn mouth, you know. Uh, and, and, and police officers, quite frankly, deal with a lot of people. And if you're respectful and you're quiet, they'll forget you by the time the court date comes. You know, the court date's not going to be for months. So if you're respectful and quiet, you don't, but they, but they go out of their way to remember the people who caused them trouble, right? And they'll make sure they show up to court for them. So, so that, that's how you set the stage correctly. And then when you go in front of the judge, you know, it's just going to depend, you know, how they might have crystal clear evidence that you're guilty. They might not, but it's just being respectful and doing all that stuff. And if you can, I always re recommend hiring a lawyer. I mean, lawyers are there to navigate all, all of that, you know, that, that, that the legal process. Yeah, so that's kind of my tips. There, there's no cure all, right? There's no magic way to, to get out of every ticket. If there was, I would, no. I would let you know, but you know, it, it's just about setting yourself out, you know, set, setting yourself up for the most probable chance of success. It's very good advice. So what are you going to do now? What am I going to do now? Um, I guess not get blowjobs underneath the bridge anymore. That's the first thing. But uh, There's lots of other places you can get blowjobs, Alex. What was that? Where you won't get a ticket. Where you won't get a ticket. Where you can oh. get one safely. Safely. Yeah, I know. I know a lot of spots around here. Don't worry. <laughs> oh, we're not worried about you at all, Alex. Just, just, just for the for the listeners at home who might be concerned that under a bridge is the only place where you can get a blowjob. There are other there are other avenues. There are other places. This is why we do this. This is why we have conversations like this to let important information such as that into the open. Yes, people need cheaper to learn from others mistakes well thank you very much for for calling in alex and uh you know sharing your escapades and and you know look stay safe out there right and you know write down a list of five other places so that you have it on hand when you need a Ten place four. to go to get a blowjob that's not a bridge 10-4 
Thank you, sir. Take care, Alex. Hey, y'all have a good night.